Well, the Carolinas are setting records for the amount of rain that we're getting, and so those of you who live in Florida who follow my posts uh, probably uh, think that you're getting a lot of rain, but uh, North Carolina set a all-time history record for rain, uh, and uh, even in the Simpsonville area, we are way, way, way above uh, our average rainfall for the year. So. Uh, we're thankful we don't have the cold weather to go with it because then it would probably be record levels of snow. Nevertheless, we're in the book of Galatians. We're going to finish it up today, uh, working our way back from Revelation to Genesis, some of my favorite sections of Scripture, and this certainly is one of them. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, we Christians bury our wounded, <laughs> but I think that's very true. Uh, very often we confuse church discipline with uh, the area of restoring and uh, the church is supposed to be in the restoration business. Now if there's no uh, effort on the part of those that are sinning uh, willfully and publicly and uh, outwardly and, and so on uh, where we can go to them privately and try to get them to correct and they refuse to correct their actions uh, but we confuse sometimes church discipline with uh, the fact that we're supposed to try to restore them. And so here we are in Galatians 6, it says, Brethren, even if anyone is caught in trespasses, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to himself so that you too will not be tempted. Wow, what a wonderful passage of scripture. Even if you're caught in trespasses, those that are spiritual are to restore that one in a spirit of gentleness, uh, each one looking to himself though and not be tempted. Now that doesn't mean to ignore sin, it doesn't mean you, there aren't times when church has to take church discipline, but it's certainly our first attempt should always be, and it should be our hardest attempt, to restore somebody, uh, not to continue to bury our injured, our wounded. And uh, so it's a critical passage of scripture, I think, for, particularly for the church today. Uh, the second part of uh, this section of scripture is bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, then he is nothing. He deceives himself, but each one must examine his own work and then he will have a reason for boasting in regard to himself alone and not regard to another. <laughs> Another very interesting passage of scripture because it doesn't uh, talk about examining the good works that we do. It talks about examining ourselves, examining what works we do that is good and bad. And if we still think we have a reason to boast, if we think that we are equal to Christ, uh, we better be real careful. Uh, and so we, we need to be sure that we look at ourselves and do the correcting that we can of ourselves instead of worrying about correcting our brothers. Uh, and then finally, the next section is chapter uh, 6, verses 7 and following. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Boy, is another critical and wonderful section of scripture here because uh, we need to be sure that we're not deceiving ourselves. God's not mocked. And both in the area of discipline of others and restoring others, that's God's business as well. And uh, we know that God can punish far better than we could ever punish. We know that God can reward far better than we could ever reward. And, and many times, when we think about others, we need to remember that God will take care of it. Uh, we, we don't have to uh, bury our wounded. We don't have to condemn and uh, to destroy the reputations of. We need to try to restore if we possibly can, and then maybe just brush our feet off. But here also, we need to remember that uh, God finally has the final word. And if we're going to sow, if we're going to do the things of the flesh, we'll reap what comes with the flesh. And that's always a bad thing. And if we sow to the Spirit, that is, love, joy, peace, kindness, uh, some of those things that we've already studied, then certainly we will we'll reap those things. It may not seem like it comes instantly, 
but it does come. God does reward those that are faithful. God does reward those that sow in the Spirit, those that do the works of God. Not for boasting purposes and not for self-gratification, but because they know that's what God wants them to do. And then finally, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Now, that says all people. And then it goes on and says, especially to those that are the household of faith. Now, we should make an effort to do these things to all people, but particularly zero in on those that are of faith, uh, those that are brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we may be called to pray for those that are not our best friends, uh, but uh, we should count it a privilege to be able to pray on their behalf, sincerely wishing for their healing, for their well-being, and for their uh, condition. And so we'll be tested along the way. Can we, in fact, lay aside any hurts and harms that have come to us through them, and we try to restore them, and we try to restore ourselves to what Christ wants us to be? And that's my thought for the day. I hope that you'll chew on that section of scripture. Galatians 6, 1 through 10. It's worthy of reading multiple times and stopping and meditating on the words. My thought for the day. God bless you.